Well, welcome everyone. I'm Andy Jenks and I'm here with the communications and community engagement team here at Henrico County Public Schools. It is a beautiful Tuesday evening, 6.30 p.m. This is the second in a series of three listening sessions for the Henrico County School Board. And tonight's topic is relationships. And before we officially get underway, I want to uh, introduce and let you know that all five of our school board members are here, as well as some other folks from the central office. And what I want them to do so that they can appear on your screen and be part of this uh, listening session for the remainder of the evening, I will uh, invite them to uh, say hello and, and wave real quick so they pop up on your screen. Our chair representing the Fairfield District is Roscoe Cooper. Good evening, everybody. Our vice chair representing the Tuckahoe District is Marcy Shea. Good evening, y'all. Thanks so much for spending time with us tonight. Hearing your feedback informs what we do, and so we're so appreciative of you this evening. Christy Kinsella represents the Brooklyn District. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, as I often say to my constituents, uh, if I don't know, I can't advocate. So thank you so much for giving us your feedback this evening. I'm listening. Mickey Ogburn represents the Three Chop District. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the room. And Alicia Atkins represents the Verina District. Hey, hey, hey. Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad that you are here tonight. Thank you for joining. Excellent. And by now, all of our board members should be on your screen, but I also want to let some additional folks say hello as well. Our superintendent, Dr. Amy Cashwell. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you virtually this evening. Our workforce and career development director, Mac Baton. Good evening. Thanks for being here and thank you all for the opportunity to be here with you all. And our family and community engagement director, Adrian Cole Johnson. Good evening and ditto all of the warm welcomes that everyone has provided. Excellent. And that'll do it for our introductions this evening. I do have a few, uh, I guess, uh, housekeeping nuggets to help us move along smoothly this evening. Our speakers will get to us more in just a second, but uh, some details about how this listening session will work, very similar to how we did it a month ago for the first in a, our series of listening sessions. This is being recorded. I think we all realize how beautiful it is outside this evening. So if there are some folks who are uh, otherwise occupied this evening, they should know that this session is being recorded and we'll post this link to the school board's page of our website. We're also gonna drop that link into the chat of this meeting so that you can see it and pass it along to whomever would like to see it. There are two ways to access this session, by the way, in case you're hearing from folks who don't know how to get in. Uh, there's the view only link, which you go to on henricoschools.us. And then there's the actual Microsoft Teams participation link, both of which right now are available on the homepage of our main website. So the simple way to get in is go to henricoschools.us and you'll see two options right there on the homepage. Choose the one that works best for you. Microsoft Teams allows you to participate. And then the view only or live stream link will allow you to watch and uh, see things from that perspective. Both of those were included in the Binder newsletter, which went out earlier today. So shout out for the Binder in case you want to get up to date on some news and notes from Henrico County Public Schools. Now, if you're with us in the Microsoft Teams room, here's what you do. You raise your hand by using the raise your hand icon or simply type, I have a question or a comment in the meeting chat and include your name. It's very important that you include your name because the communications team is working behind the scenes to populate a list of names that I'm gonna call out in the order in which folks sign up. So if you have a question, use the raise your hand icon or use the chat feature, say you have a question or a comment and include your name so we can add your name to a list of folks who I call out. So those speakers will be announced by me. I'll call on them in order. All of your mics are muted for the moment, so don't worry about being able to mute or unmute. We've overridden that for just a second. We will unmute at the conclusion of a very brief presentation uh, that we're gonna get to in just a second. As always, we ask for folks to be courteous and respectful, and it would be great if you also turned on your camera uh, so we can see you as you share your thoughts uh, and feelings with members of the school board. And to allow time for as many speakers as possible, we're asking folks to keep their topics, uh, their comments, I should say, brief 
and on topic. As moderator, my goal is to make sure everyone has enough space and time to share their views, but also to move this along and make time for as many folks as possible. While we wait for folks to sign up, which again, you can do by raising your hand and we'll check your name that way, or just type your name into the uh, chat section. Now is the time to, to get in line or, or to get in order. We'll call the names in just a second, but we will begin with a brief overview from Dr. Cashwell, Mac Baton, and Adrian Cole Johnson, who will sit tight for just a moment while I pull up my screen. And Dr. Cashwell, you may begin. Thank you, Andy. And it's so good to have so many of uh, uh, so many of you join us on what Andy has pointed out a, a number of times is a really beautiful evening outside. So um, we are we always uh, look forward to opportunities to hear from our stakeholders. And so tonight's discussion, as he shared before, is um, related to one of our cornerstones, relationships. For those of you who may not be as familiar with um, our strategic plan in Henrico County Public Schools, we anchor all of our work um, and efforts to serve our students around four cornerstones. And one of those four cornerstones is relationships. And so that's the focus tonight. And um, our other cornerstones are about academic growth, safety and wellness, and equity and opportunity. But again, tonight uh, we'll be focused on relationships. And so those cornerstones anchor our work. And then we have a number of goals uh, that we want to achieve related to those cornerstones. And one of our goals uh, is going to serve as a catalyst for our discussion and our listening session this evening. And so one of our goals is to make sure that we are cultivating and maintaining these collaborative partnerships within our schools and in our school communities. And all of this is done again in service of our students to ensure that we are enriching their experience and ultimately providing relevant learning opportunities. And so um, while we put these goals together for our strategic plan with a lot of stakeholder voice all along the way, um, just getting those goals in place with stakeholder voice um, isn't the, the last step. We want to continue to hear from you as we work to make those goals a reality. Uh, so a lot of this work is underway. Some of it's yet to come. And you're going to get to hear from staff uh, in just a minute about some of the things we're doing related to this goal. And then, of course, we uh, will open open the floor to hear from you. So again, um, excited to share where we're headed and can't wait to hear from you as well as we shape these efforts. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mac Baton, who's going to kick off the presentation and talk about how we're uh, working to achieve this goal. Thank you, Dr. Cashwell. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you all tonight. And I want to start out with a saying that I use a lot. Uh, when we talk about partnerships, you know, a partnership is more than a handout. It should truly be a handshake. So when you look at that, uh, how, how can you make that partnership grow so that everyone benefits? One of the first mistakes that educators at times will make, and we're working to overcome this, is we immediately go out and the first thing we do is go for the ask. Can you help us do A, B, C, or D? Ultimately, that is their goal, but in a partnership, you know, what are you as the community getting in return? So when you're thinking about a partnership, there should be four main focal points that all of this centers around. First, what is the value of the partnership for both parties? With, with partnerships, both parties should be gaining. This can be an intrin intrinsic or an extrinsic value uh, and with most things, you get out of it what you put into it, but ultimately the goal of the partnership is to draw the community into the school and help the school be a part of the community. So each partner should have a voice and a choice about what this partnership will look like as it, as it grows. So with that, what is the goals of a partnership? For starters, it should be a shared vision. Obviously, we're all in this for our young people, our students, and we want this partnership to benefit our students, but we also want it to benefit our community by making the students a part of that community. An, a good partnership is truly an ongoing event. It's not a one and done. It's one that it starts out and it just continues to grow and snowball, and that before you know it, you have this great partnership 
working with the schools and the schools working with the community that's just blossoming. And you, you're really, when you look back, say it was an easy trip to get there. And the other part of it is it's going to take an investment in time. It's not something you put money into it. It's about the relationships that are built in this partnership. So once you have the goals of the partnerships, we understand the value. How do you know if a partnership's really working the way it should? So you look for the outcomes. How does this benefit our students and how does it benefit the community? Are both parties gaining from this opportunity? It's not just about money at the end of the day. It's about the relationships that are built through this partnership. And I think to me, most important from an outsider looking in, what does this partnership look like? If we'd say we have this great partnership, what does it look like when it's up and running? So the first thing, are we celebrating the accomplishments on both parties, what the community's doing, what the school's doing, and celebrating the growth of this partnership? Are we ready to grow this partnership even bigger? Is it an ongoing partnership? Is this the start and we're building on it? And when it's all said and done, is the students and the community benefiting from this opportunity? So really, when you think about partnerships, it's about relationships and working together. And with that, I have the opportunity to throw it over to Adrian Cole, who will take it from here. Mac, thank you so much. I think you really said it all. So I will just be the icing on top with all of the important information that you shared. As shared earlier, I'm Adrian Cole Johnson, and I have the honor of serving as the Director of Family and Community Engagement for Henrico County. And so really this topic of cultivating, uh, maintaining and deepening relationships is very near and dear um, to the work that my team does, the FACE team does on a, on a daily basis. Um, we really live into um, the framework that you see on the screen, this build, bridge and boost approach. And so um, really focus on building relationships and resource rich um, school communities that has a lot to do with the partnerships and just the people that show up um, in our schools. Um, we have a focus on bridging high impact collaborations and partnerships. So again, who are the partners that should be at the table and who should we spend most of our time with in collaborating to make sure that we're providing um, just effective outcomes and increased outcomes for our students? And last but not least is boosting integrated and transformative family involvement and engagement. And so this means that our family engagement is linked to learning and again, it's really centered in the work that will um, that will highlight the success for our young people. We live into this bridge build boost model really throughout our school division. And so um, with the values that we've shared, um, it may be that you have interacted with one of our family advocates. Uh, maybe you've attended a bridge builder session where you've been able to learn a bit, whether you're a staff or, e or either a parent. And then I'd be remiss not to mention our school communities, the principals, the teachers, the counselors, the social workers that really show up and live into a relationship on a daily and ongoing basis basis with our students and families. Um, while you know time is limited, I wanted to also share some of the areas that have been researched and proven to provide increased outcomes and success for all students to achieve. And so we often consider these areas of focus when we're looking at community partnerships and just really deciding what relationships to prioritize. Again, as, as everyone else is, I'm excited to be here and to really listen and learn from our community. And Andy, I will hand it back over to you. You're on mute, Andy. Adrian and Mac, thank you very much for, uh, yes, uh, Fixing me up there and uh, we have correctly pulled the PowerPoint off the screen and we are ready to get started. So what we would like to do is hear from our audience members who are joining us on Microsoft Teams. If you are here to share with members of the school board, that's why we are here. We are here to listen. So we would appreciate it and like it very much if you use the raise your hand icon in Microsoft Teams or just use the chat feature to let us know that you have a question. I'm going to be referring to a, a list that is populated by some members of the communications team who are working behind the scenes. And uh, I am seeing absolutely zero folks who have signed up to share in front of the school board. So uh, listen, if you go first, 
you get to enjoy the uh, beautiful Tuesday evening weather a little bit sooner than those who are uh, near the tail end of our program. But no matter what, we're here until at least 7.30. And we do hope uh, some of the folks who have taken time out of their Tuesday to be part of this listening session um, uh, feel comfortable sharing some things that are on their minds as it relates to relationship building in the school system. Mac Baton spoke about relationships and partnerships, I should say, that certainly benefits students as they are preparing for uh, the workforce or college or the military. Adrian is speaking about our family engagement efforts, and both of them touch on uh, priorities for the school division countywide. But if there is something related to the idea of relationships, or at least somewhat connected to family engagement or business partnerships, that's why we're here. So we certainly invite you to share with the school board. Some of my folks in the communications team are, are behind the scenes, waiting for the very first person. Can you hear me? I, I, I heard that person, and you get to go first. I, tell us your name, where you're from. I am Ms. Akompong, and I am in, of course, uh, in Waikou County. I'm a parent, and I have two students in high school. One has since transitioned to college. And I'm wondering what um, what what last minute or reinforcement um, programs or resources or help that the county is given to the seniors. Of course, they are past the ACE opportunities. They are past the paid internship programs and all the wonderful partnerships that are currently ongoing. So given the fact that it's been a very stressful year, um, some of them um, have had a more challenging time than others. Their academics have suffered. You know, what, what, what opportunities or what help is being given or is there even a thought of helping to reestablish them, not just with the resources, but even even emotionally, psychologically, you know, they are still kids. Some of them have turned 18, you know, 17, but they are in effect still kids. And I personally don't see that, that glue that is needed to help our children to transition properly. Well, we, uh, we appreciate um, your thoughts very much. And our board is here primarily uh, to listen. I, I want to make sure that there is adequate time for other folks who want to share in front of the school board. We, we certainly have no shortage of folks who could uh, have a discussion or a conversation about that. What might also be beneficial, um, and, and I don't know that we're going to have a, a full roster of folks that, that goes well into the night like we have some previous sessions, but if you're willing to, to share some contact information the folks who are with us here this evening are primarily here to listen from the board's perspective, but we can have folks address many of your questions from a yeah, number of different to perspectives. To share some contact information. Uh, if you're, the folks who are if, with us here this evening are if you're primarily willing to share to some of your contact the information. But we can have folks and I would kindly ask one person to, to share some contact mute, information. Uh, mute that, that microphone because I am hearing an echo. Oh. Like all right, thank you very much. All right, so I do want to clear the runway for other folks who just wish to share about relationship building, partnership building with Henrico County Public Schools, a core component of our strategic plan. And this is an opportunity for us to uh, hear what folks in the community are saying. We have roughly uh, 30 folks who are with us in the room. Many of us are, are from within uh, either leadership or the school division administration, but there are some folks who have uh, come out and we encourage you to uh, come forward and, and share what's on your mind. And we are still waiting for speaker number two to come forward. We don't bite, we're friendly. This isn't a debate. We, uh, we are very interested in hearing what folks are, uh, have to say. And uh, it, it's created a, an environment specifically where uh, a captive audience is here to listen. Uh, and, and hear some opinions that maybe we haven't heard before. And that can be folks who work within the school division who I, I recognize uh, in our uh, audience, or folks who are parents uh, in the school division 
and folks who have just a vested interest in the success of our public schools. Uh, no matter who you are, we appreciate that you're here on a, a tremendously good weather day, which I am obligated to mention about every four minutes tonight. But uh, this is a captive audience, and we hope uh, you don't mind taking a few seconds to share what's on your mind. So either use your hand to raise, uh, uh, signify that you have a, a question, or just put your name in the chat, and we'll be sure to call on you. Excuse me, Andy, may I speak? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you so much for uh, providing this opportunity um, to meet, I mean, online. Uh, it's a beautiful Tuesday. <laughs> I just have a quick question. I checked the uh, Henrico County Public School 2021 to 2022 calendar. Um, we're ex looking forward to the new school year, my children, including me. So my question is, um, I saw we have uh, several like uh, holidays, student holiday is like a uh, 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 tradition or cultural related uh, observation. So it's for children to ha students have holiday and uh, teacher have conference. Uh, I. My question is, what do you please think about the Lunar New Year, the Lunar Calendar, also as knowing as Chinese New Year, be considered as a student holiday in Henrico County? I think it's very, very meaningful to many uh, families with like uh, Asian cultural background, and it's also a very, very fun culture for students to learn. Outstanding. It's uh, the biggest celebration. Would you mind uh, if it's OK, if you would share your name and maybe your school affiliation with us? Oh, sure. Uh, my name is Daisy, the flower Daisy, and uh, I came from Henrico County Public School, Echo Lake Elementary School. And uh, before the pandemic, our school usually has annual like uh, global night. We, we really enjoy that. The students get a chance to know all different kind of culture. And uh, I was uh, very active and involved, and uh, I, I think it's great uh, event. Uh, we hope we can continue. So I was checking the calendar. I didn't see uh, we have any like uh, kind of lunar New Year celebration. Maybe it's a good addition on our calendar. Oh, we appreciate <laughs> that very much. I, I know. Uh, I think I can speak for some of us on the team that um, accounting for a variety of diverse observances and religious holidays is extremely important to this school division. The current calendar, as well as next year's calendar, does begin to account for those observances far more than other calendars in previous years. And there are a number of different things we work around in terms of uh, uh, contracts that exist for our employees, as well as uh, when the school, school year can start and when it can end. And none of that is worth getting into great depth now, except to say thank you very much for sharing your perspective on some other things that this school division can consider as we work to build and improve the relationships that we have in our county. That's exactly uh, what we're here for tonight. So Daisy, thank you very much for taking time to share that. Thank you so much, Andy. Uh, by the way, I really uh, enjoyed the video about Snow Day you did. Really hey. cool. <laughs> hey, in a minute, I'm going to play that on a loop for the next 45 minutes. So uh, that, that's in my bag of tricks to kill some time if I need to. But no, on a serious note, Daisy, thank you very much for uh, sharing uh, with us. That was really meaningful and we appreciate it very much. Uh, Aaron you. Daniel is on my list. Aaron, uh, you are on with the school board. Welcome in. Hi, um, I'm the innovative learning coach at Cuyacuson Middle School. And I know you, you guys have heard from us at Cuyacuson, um, but I think it just can't be said enough. Um, something that's so important in our building is building relationships with our families as it is in all buildings. But we just come up against the barrier of so many of our families that speak another language, um, which is such an asset to our building, but also just a barrier in trying to develop those relationships when those of us who are in the building trying to develop those relationships don't speak those languages. Um, and so just always, wanting to advocate for more resources um, at schools with populations, um, I guess all schools, but I just know there are some schools that have higher populations of families who speak other languages. Um, and we feel really fortunate to have those families, but we and we want to make sure they feel welcome um, and that we can develop those relationships. And I think we just need as many resources as we possibly can um, to kind of move past those barriers um, so that we can really welcome all of our families into our building. Aaron, I'll chime in because I know you can give us some school-based perspective on this. And, and most of the session is not about me asking questions, but 
I think I've got a, a few extra minutes to, to get your perspective, which is we put a lot of big HCPS announcements into six languages, English plus five translations, but that's largely existing in email, which then directs people to a website that also needs some form of translation. And I guess my question for you and the other folks at Quiocasin, and frankly, anyone else who might have a, an opinion on this later, is, is that the best or most effective way at reaching families who uh, don't speak or read English as their first language? Or are there other mechanisms that you find successful at the school? I think honestly, we really need human resources. We need more translators. We need more bodies in the building or people who are available to us because we have a lot of families who may not be um, literate in the language that they're fluent in. Um, and so all the translated documents in the world aren't going to help us reach those families. Um, and plus, if we have people, you know, that aren't always checking their email or aren't going to go that, you know, that next step to the website, um, you know, we don't want to leave them behind either. Um, and so I think more than anything is we need more opportunities to have in-person conversations um, and have those translation services and those humans there with us to help. I think on it, that would be the, the absolute best resource um, that we could have to communicate with our families. Aaron Daniel, thank you very much from Quioxin Middle School. Appreciate it. Um, if there are others, then we have a, a wide open field. So if you are interested in sharing about relationship building with the school division or the school board or everything in between, now is an opportunity to uh, raise your hand and let us know what is on your mind. You can raise your hand by using the little icon. I do see what appears to be at least a couple of uh, raised hands. Hopefully those aren't just folks that we uh, heard from a moment ago. Um, so we might be able to get to you next, but you can also just use the chat feature if you're more comfortable with that. Say your name, let us know you have a question and your name will get uh, added to my, my list and, and call people out in the order in which they sign up. But if I'm not mistaken, I do see a couple of hands raised. I am capable of hovering over at least one of the names. Uh, Stefan, is it correct, Stefan? And if I got that correct, you can unmute and you are on. Hey, hey, my name is Stefan Senkner. Um, I am the father of a 10-year-old at River's Edge. And how most parents, I often feel like um, I live in a bubble or I am living in a bubble. Are there any plans to build maybe relationships with other schools in the in the Hilton down uh, district to create like um like a partner school, sorry, a partner school in another part of Runai Group to build uh, relationships outside the bubble? Good. So the idea is about creating partner schools outside of the, the the bubble that may exist in, in one school's own community. Did I get that right, Stefan? Yes, yes. Excellent. Well, I, I'm not going to even attempt to speak for all of our school principals at the moment. I knew they I know they tend to have relationships with the feeder patterns uh, that exist. So elementary, elementary, middle to high, and those others that are nearby. But the idea of something that maybe branches out beyond that is is certainly a reason why we're here. So thank you very much for sharing that idea in front of the school board. I appreciate it. Uh, I see the initials KM. KM, if that describes you, then you are up next with the school board. Good afternoon, everyone, and staff and personnel. My name is Khadija Muhammad. I have a, um, seven, a seven year old who attends Carver Elementary. My main concern, which is probably everyone else's main concern, is the virtual learning. Um, she has difficulties when it comes down to the learning. Every five seconds, her computer is shutting down. Um, I believe I am in a reasonable place where the connection is good, but it seems like every five seconds, she has to log back in and log back out and get into the classroom. So she's missing a wide She's missing her classroom, and I don't, and that's frustrating to her. But I try myself as a parent to be patient and say it's going to be okay. So, what could be a better result when things happen like that? Or what aspect could I do to stay more positive and not allow her to get frustrated? And and I do want to be very careful that if if I develop the routine where I'm answering questions, that's that could be dangerous territory, <laughs> and so. Yes, uh, 
part of this is about us making uh, mental and, and physical notes of things that our community is sharing with us for long-term relationship building with the county. But the problem you are, are describing for us is obviously of critical day-to-day -day importance. So I have two basic suggestions, and, and my guess is you've already tried these avenues, but it, it's contacting our technology team, helpdesk at henrico.k12.va.us. That's helpdesk at henrico.k12.va.us, which I think our team can probably drop in the chat too. Uh, I, I think it makes the most sense for someone who uh, has a pretty good uh, handle on technology to examine what may be going on with the Chromebook, for example, or if there's an internet connectivity issue that we can help resolve. Uh, my The last time this came up in front of me, we still had hotspots, for example, that uh, in certain situations can be provided where internet access doesn't exist. I'm not trying to say that either of those describes your particular situation. Um, and if it doesn't, maybe you'll consider uh, leaving some contact information with us and we can have the right person get back to you. I hope, yes, sir, I hope thank that. You so much. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, it, board members are all on ice right now as they see me trying to answer questions. And, and my job is really, you know, just to call up the next speaker, right? No. But uh, we do have several folks from the administration who are, are certainly welcome to chime in if something falls under their area of expertise. But for the most part, we've set up this opportunity for our board members to hear what's important to you, especially as it relates to relationship building with Henrico County Public Schools. And with that, my sheet is clear. So if you still have something that is on your mind, you are welcome to raise your hand. Let us know that uh, you'd like to speak or drop your name into the chat and we will call on you momentarily. I'm going to play a snow day video. I'm going to do it. I'm going to boost our views on that thing. Actually, the fourth graders recorder is over here in a bag. I'll just start playing that into the microphone for the next 10 minutes. And you do not know. want to hear that. I, I believe I believe we have a, is that the Chairman Cooper that I just heard? Yeah, and, and you're doing a great job. Can we do karaoke? Would you mind singing real quick? <laughs> I mean, and, and then I think that I think that would probably make people ask a lot of questions or give comments to hear you sing, brother. I've yeah. never heard you sing, so I'm just assuming. But if you did that, I promise you that there might be the catalyst that we need. They, they'd be questioning the school division's judgment about bringing me on in the first place. That's the only question we'd get, right? Um, but I, I do want to create the most upper, uh, the most time, and, and the most available opportunity for folks who have taken time out of their evening to be here with us. I, I know this room is not entirely full with central office and school board members. There are some folks uh, who have set aside some personal time to be with us. And so if you have something to share, good, bad, or indifferent, what do you like? What do you wish for? What do you want out of your school division? Those are all good things to share too. It doesn't always have to be a critique or a criticism. Um, if someone in our audience has something positive that should be reinforced throughout the school division. That's always good to hear too, because so often the group that is with us this evening hears the issues and the problems that need to be solved, and that's exactly what we're supposed to do. But uh, sometimes that comes at the expense of hearing all the good things that are happening within this school division. And so if anyone out there has something uh, good, a positive experience, or just an example of a relationship building experience that worked for you between a, a a staff member and a student, a school and a school community, or something else entirely. Uh, this is a good opportunity to raise your hand or drop your name in the chat, and we'd love to hear from you. I see a hand has gone up. I don't immediately see the name, though, but I think we're going to pull that up in just a moment. Tell you what, if you raised your hand, you get a free pass. I, I think it's Ebony. Ebony, is that you? Yes. Hey, how are you doing, guys? I'm great. Welcome in. Thank you. I wanted to know, because it's a lot of kids um, this school year who grades have dropped significantly. Um, with the up and coming school year, what would be in place for them to help them get back on board? And, and Ebony, if you don't mind, uh, is there additional personal experience that you'd like to share or anything um, um, successful on your end too in that regard? 
Um, my daughter is um kind of struggling. Um, I work about twelve to fourteen hours a day, and she have three younger siblings. So of course, with COVID, I am a nurse. Um, we don't get many days off, and by the time I get home, she's asleep. And I'm trying to brush up on schoolwork and make sure that her grades are where they need to be. So this year, her grades have um, dropped significantly. I'm always on top of her. I keep in contact with her teachers through email, so they kind of help me. But I was just wondering, is there anything that will be in place for the children for sure. next year? Because... And, and I- we did get to opt out um, the testing. And so a lot of people have done that because their kids are not performing as well as they would as if they were in school. Got it. And, and I, I will say, Ebony, that we are set up mostly to, to listen and to report back to those within the administration about the supports that can be put in place. And, and I don't ever want to pretend that I'm directly answering a question that might be important to you, but at least one thing that comes to mind is, uh, especially at the elementary school level, and by the way, while, while you're still there, what is uh, your school affiliation or affiliations, Ebony? Uh, Highland Springs High School, Echo, and Achievable Dreams. Okay, and I was thinking more toward the elementary level where Summer Academy is a free option for our families, registration is open now. Uh, one of our folks will drop a link into the chat here if you are interested in at least considering it. There are a two-week program or a four-week version of it in the, in the month of July. And that's at least one uh, possibility to be supportive of, of students and their academic as well as their social emotional wellness. Um, I, I don't immediately want to just assume that that answers your question, but it's at least the first thing uh, that comes to mind. As for additional supports in place. I think you've got an important audience here that will want to see what else we can do as a school division to uh, convey or communicate supports that we have in place and things for people to consider as we approach the 21-22 school year. So thank you very much, Ebony. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a blessed one. You too. Uh, The floor is open for anyone uh, who is here and would like to share in front of the school board. You kind of see how this is going now. We're we're talking about relationship building with the school division and and not everything has to have a has to be a question or has to have an immediate answer. But this forum exists in order for us to hear fresh perspectives. And maybe there's something that you are experiencing every day that you might think the rest of us know, but maybe we don't. Uh, And like Mrs. Kinsella said at the top of our program, sometimes you don't know until we hear about it directly. And and that's what this this session is designed to accomplish. And and we appreciate uh, the 30 or so folks who have uh, set aside some time to be with us this Tuesday evening. Let's not let that opportunity go to waste. So if you uh, know of something that is meaningful to you or important to you or an experience that you've had with your school or your school system, Uh, You've got all five members of the school board and several folks from the central office who are here to listen to what is on your mind. And by the way, we are populating the meeting chat with all kinds of links that are referenced. There's also a a kind of a secondary conversation from some of our board members chiming in to uh, uh, some of the concerns and questions that we have this evening, so you can keep an eye on that as well. Uh, we do appreciate everyone who has been here with us this evening. Uh, we are uh, at least scheduled to be here till 7.30. And if we do run out of steam in that respect, then I, I certainly won't keep everyone hold up that long, but I also want to honor um, everyone who expected us to be here for an hour. And maybe there's someone in our audience who is thinking about what to say or, or, or just waiting for the opportunity to get right in front of the computer. And I I wanna honor that commitment. Um, So I will pause for just a moment and wait for some folks to uh, come forward. Andy, I'm thinking I need to break out the ukulele. (laughs) Uh, Another one of our instruments that helps make us for the, I think 22nd or 23rd year in a row, a best community for music education. 
Yes, Enjoy. I am learning Absolutely. alongside my child. So, uh, um, Andy, I'm just going to throw in. There was a suggestion in the chat. I don't know if Adrian saw it um, from Dr. Cashwell about uh, sharing about our bridge builders. If you could share some more information about that, I think that might um, be a really good idea. Spark some conversation, possibly. Absolutely. And thank you for thinking of us as well, Dr. Cashwell. It's a great opportunity. And also just thank you all for the dialogue on screen and also in the chat, um, just having us think about some opportunities that we have. And so Bridge Builders Academy is really where we do a series of workshops and sessions where we can, similar to this, listen and learn from each other. Um, we often feature um, individuals within the school district, but also community partners and organizations that are doing really good work for students and families in Henrico. We actually just had a session yesterday evening by Mathnasium, and they talked about my number senses are tingling, and I learned a lot about the new math that is currently happening. Um, and so we do these periodically about every other week. Um, our next session, I believe, is May 10th, and we are going to be um, featuring Dr. Bella Sood, if you're not familiar with her. She is a significant player in the region when it comes to mental health and social emotional learning supports. And so she's going to be um, talking specifically to Henrico students and families just about how we're managing um, during the pandemic, um, during virtual learning, and really giving some tips as well for things that can happen even at home to support our students as we all have been kind of learning through this new space. I would love to drop the link in the chat um, so that hopefully some of you all here can join us as well. Um, it's always an informal time where we hear from speakers and presenters for about 20 or 30 minutes, but then there's a lot of time for conversations and dialogue because again, this is where we have been building a lot of relationships in this virtual space. And so I will drop it in the chat. Again, thank you all for giving me some time to share that. And I hope to see you all at a Bridge Builder session. And Adrian, while we have you here, uh, I think it's important to point out that we've had some success with the Bridge Builders Academy because pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, uh, the Bridge Builders Academy existed and it existed in the typical format, which is we have a room at some location in the county. It could be a public library, it could be a recreation center. A small handful of interested folks show up and we have a great discussion. But then everything changes about 15 months ago. We go into the virtual space and lo and behold, not trying to say this happens every time, but sometimes 50, 60 plus folks are showing up. And that by any measurement is a dramatic improvement and something we wanna keep encouraging. And so uh, we would love it if the folks who are hearing the sound of your voice tonight um, know that it, it's really easy to participate in the Bridge Builders Academy. You don't have to leave the comfort of your own home. And Adrian, one other question I'll have you, yeah, turn that mic on. And, and you and I spoke today also about uh, a big blue bus that folks are going to see rolling around town. I, I know we have one event at, at Ratcliffe coming up this weekend, but it's, there's more to it than that. In general, when people hear big blue, tell mm -hmm. us what that means. Wow, big blue, you can see the smile on my face. You know, working in engagement, we are used to seeing and touching and feeling people. And so that has been a challenge um, over the last year. And so um, we're getting back to a few in-person events. And so Big Blue is literally a big blue bus. Um, it's not just a bookmobile. And so we're really looking to make it um, just an interactive space, whether there are manipulatives that we're handing out. Um, I'm thinking about um, Cassandra, Dr. Willis in Title I, always has amazing books and resources for our young people in the communities that we're going into and just a place where we can pop up into neighborhoods and just getting closer to the community to provide those resources and so um, we are back on the road this saturday ratcliffe is having an amazing health fair a drive-through health fair for their community but we will be there and i think just the visual presence of big blue is always fun and exciting for our young people and so staff, if you're on the call, you'll be getting a memo about it soon. We are preparing our team to be able to receive the request. Um, we do events at our school communities and also just at different um, community events that are happening as well. And so just really excited. So again, thank you, Andy, for, for that plug and mentioning Big Blue is back on the road and you cannot miss it because it is literally a big <laughs> blue bus. 
Adrian Cole Johnson is our director of family and community engagement. Feel free to give Adrian a shout anytime. I, I know she's putting the Bridge Builders Academy information in the chat. I'm sure she will also drop other ways to get in touch and you can connect with her and the entire uh, family engagement team. Just remember, start with Adrian and you'll be well on your way to successful relationships with Henrico County Public Schools. I do want to remind folks that we are wide open. So if you are interested in sharing in front of the school board, now's a great time to do it. No lines, no waiting. And so you can raise your hand right here within Microsoft Teams or just drop your name into the chat and I'll be sure to call on you in just a moment. Um, we are booked until 7.30. I, I'll, I'll tie it up a few minutes earlier if we want to, but I, I do want to create a, a space for anyone who may be thinking about sharing in front of the school board that you still have time to do so. While we wait, Mac, I want to allow you to, um, to uh, promote another uh, really just incredible thing for Henrico County Public Schools, and, and I think it, it helps us form relationships with our, our students the business community and recognize our graduating seniors who are heading into the workforce in ways that maybe were not ever previously conceived of. And this started about three years ago with the letter of intent signing day, lit up the internet like nothing I've ever seen before. And Mac, that all started with you and our uh, career and technical education team. Tell us about uh, letter of, uh, not letter of intent signing day, but uh, CTE signing day, CTE letter of intent signing day, and how we have a version of that coming up in the very near future. Yes, we're excited that on May 18th, we will be back uh, having our third letter of intent signing day. For, we will be celebrating our students that have chosen to go into the workforce. Many of them are having their uh, companies pay for their continuing education while they're earning. So it's a great way to truly celebrate. And, and when we talk about relationships, uh, this is a way that we are pulling their community in to help our students see what's next for them. This will be live streamed. Uh, and so we hope that uh, everybody will watch it because how do you know? I think I saw in the chat somewhere, someone said you don't know what it is you don't know. This is a great way to start to find out what are the opportunities out there for students and, and have some goals set and, and seeing the employers that excited and involved with their students is what it's what this is all about, the partnerships. It's yes, the employer is getting a student that will be a great uh, asset to their company, but the student has been working with these companies for the last two years. So that company has helped mold that student. So we're excited to, to celebrate this because it truly is uh, an opportunity for these students to say, look, I am do I'm going to make a difference in the future. Mac Baton, thank you very much. And I, I still remember it was a it was a Friday night three years ago. I'm sitting at a flying squirrels game with my family and the phone starts dinging like crazy. And and a post on Facebook from three days prior was suddenly reaching a million plus screens. And I'm like, did we do something wrong? Why is this spreading the way it is? And Mike Rowe, uh, who folks know from television, had shared it and said, this is the way forward. And from there, the letter of intent signing day grew legs like I've never seen. And, and my guess is, Mac, by now, many different school systems have reached out to you personally and asked how they can do it where they are too. Is that right? That is correct. We have been contacted by every state in the country, except for Hawaii, uh, <laughs> but multiple phone calls. And it's an ongoing conversation. Uh, just this week, I've probably fielded 10 phone calls already this week saying, hey, we want to do this. Can you give us the, you know, help us move forward? And we share everything because, it, you know, it's a win win for our students across the country. And so it's great to see other people uh doing this and and excited about it such a positive experience then and and remains so to this day mac thank you very much uh, i am going to uh turn the lights on so to speak and make this the last call for folks who might wish to speak in front of the school board this is the second of three uh listening sessions on relationships we have one coming up in may that i'm going to promote in just a moment i thought maybe I just saw Daisy raise 
a hand again. That may have been by mistake because I think I just saw it come down. But my point is, uh, the floor is open for folks who are with us in the audience to share in front of the school board about relationships and partnerships with Henrico County Public Schools. I do see a hand up, and it appears to be Christine. Christine, is that you? Yes, it is. Good evening, everyone. It's so good to see y'all. My name is Christine Suters. I teach at Hermitage High School, and I live in Verina. And I just wanted to share something that Dr. Jackson has been doing at Hermitage that has been really successful for building relationships. He has been holding a weekly community forum every Wednesday night. And I try to attend as a teacher and I've gotten to connect with various um, students and their families who are on the other end. So um, as a parent whose girls will be coming up through Henrico County, I think this is a wonderful initiative and I would just love to see something similar to this spread to other schools because he's really done a great job. So I just wanted to share that strategy with y'all. Well, Christine, while I have you on the line, um, tell us what you find most beneficial about uh, that kind of thing. And, and a lot of us know uh, Dr. Jackson very well, and so I'm not surprised to, to hear that. But maybe for those who don't know him well or don't know the, the staff at Hermitage all that well, what, what happens during these sessions? What do you find particularly useful and unique that might be uh, useful elsewhere? Sure. So he always starts off with a visual PowerPoint presentation. He shares Hermitage High School's goal. He uh, goes through any changes that are coming in the schedule um, and then fields any and all questions. Um, and I think that it's a really helpful environment for parents who um, maybe have unconventional work schedules. Maybe they can't come up to the school during the day. So um, it's just a, a really great way to give them an opportunity to connect with information in another way. As someone mentioned earlier, email isn't always the most effective way. So having this session has been really effective, I think, in spreading information to our community throughout this year. Right. I, I'm being told Dr. Jackson is in the meeting. Uh, Dr. Michael Jackson, what do you have to say for yourself? I'm putting him on the spot now. We, he's probably like rushing to the computer screen at, at this. Oh, there he is. Yeah. He's outdoors where we all should be on this gorgeous Tuesday evening. Dr. Michael Jackson, principal of Hermitage High School, how you doing? All right, turn that mic on, my man. Definitely did put me on the spot there. Good afternoon, everybody. I uh, appreciate the, uh, the shout out. But yes, we started a community forum this year with the wealth of information that was going out with the uh, back to school initiative and the return to learn. Uh, we thought it was, sorry. I am outside. Um, we thought it was important that we notify our community of everything that was going on um, with the back to school process. We started in August and we were going to do it three weeks prior to school uh, starting, but our community said uh, they asked to keep going. So we've been going every Wednesday, seven o'clock uh, since August 12th. We did take about three weeks off in March, but uh, yeah, we're back on. And tomorrow's heavy topic is senior initiative, senior events. So we're looking right. forward to it. So thank That's you for that. Fantastic. Appreciate it. Roll pride. <laughs> Dr. Jackson, Christine, thank you both uh, for representing Hermitage so well. We appreciate you taking time to share with us uh, in front of the school board as well as the rest of our audience. If there are other folks who would like to share in front of the school board, now's a good opportunity to, to do it. The floor is open. And I will wait just a minute to see if there are other folks who would like to share. But we, uh, we really do appreciate uh, those who have made time for us here today. Uh, we do have one more of these sessions coming up in May. I'll get to that in just a second. The first of the three sessions happened last month. All of this uh, is or will be uh, posted to the school board's page of our website. So if anyone uh, missed it for whatever reason, not just last month, but tonight's session as well, the recordings are posted to the school board's page of our website. Are there anybody else or is there anyone else who would like to share in front of the school board as we listen to ideas and experiences related to relationships. And it does appear I've got a few folks who are on my list. Uh, Juanita Lewis, is that right? Juanita? How much Dr. Jackson help me with my son? Yeah, because he's going to get my email tomorrow. All right. I do have a few microphones that appear to be open at the moment, but I'm going to try to get Juanita's attention. Wait a minute. 
Anyway. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Is that you, Juanita? Yeah. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. You can. Yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say, Dr. Jackson helped me with my son with Virtual Virginia. He has a French class, and he didn't have the the book, the correct book. And Dr. Jackson, we came went to Hermitage and got the book from Dr. Jackson. He didn't really he didn't have to do that, but he did get the book for him so he could go through virtual Virginia French class. Thanks, Dr. Jackson. Outstanding. Juanita, thank you very much for the shout out. We love that too. And, and we said that a few minutes ago, uh, is that uh, you know these listening sessions aren't always about uh, critiques or criticism or things that are wrong. And, and certainly we want to problem solve together with each and every person who comes forward. But sometimes the school division really needs to hear about what's working well and it, it, things that are, are, are right and, and people who are doing well for our students and families and it's just so incredibly rewarding to hear whether it's in an email or in this session or just crossing paths out, out in the community at the grocery store or something like that um, it is so rewarding to hear stories like that about the folks within the school system because it so often uh, just uh, isn't uh, there's no other forum to share that in front of a wider audience. Now, I see the name Aiden, uh, who is getting in. Aiden, if that's correct, you are on with the school board. Hi, it's Ashley um, Faith Cooper. Aiden is my son. Ah. Aiden, um, he attends Tuckahoe Elementary School. I just have one quick su um, suggestion. I think it will be beneficial and helpful. So my son is on the autism spectrum, so he He's in a special education um, classroom. Um, and I feel like sometimes there's like, like separation between him and the other um, kids in the school. Um, I think it would be helpful if maybe during the, you know, the April month when there is the autism awareness, um, you know, month or the days take place where you bring awareness to autism, if Hamarco Schools did something similar to that um, so that it can, you know, help, you know, with the other the other kids in the um, schools becoming, you know, aware, understanding the kids that they attend school with that may be different from them, um, and also for parents as well. Uh, Faith, thank you very much. Appreciate you sharing that in front of the school board. You've got our attention. Thank you for uh, taking time to share that. Thank you. All right. I just want to um, say thank you to two particular teachers in uh, J.R. Tucker. They have gone the extra mile to touch base with me personally, with my son who is a senior, to help him, you know, stay on course. And they are Miss Cyria, I believe, and uh, Miss Wesson, um, Donna Page. I just wanna give a shout out to them, Miss um, Gassemi. Just because you mentioned that there's really no other platform to recognize these teachers, some of them are going above and beyond and do recognize that, you know, we are in stressful times and are par partnering with the parents if we do reach out, you know, to help the kids to do well. So it's, it's not all ba bad news. So yep. I'd like to say that thank you. Miss Cordelia, is that your name? Did I get that yes. right? Yes, yes. Thank you very much for uh, for saying that. We got some momentum now. If you've got a shout out for the school system, I'll change the whole topic of this listening <laughs> session. If you have a, a shout out in front of the school board, now's a great time uh, to do it. But if you also have a question, I, I think we, we've got uh, a few more minutes, but otherwise I'll, I'll begin to wrap it up in just a second. Is there anyone uh, who is still with us in our audience who would like to speak in front of the school board? All right. Well, with that, I would like to turn it over to Mrs. Ogburn to share some closing remarks on behalf of the, the school board itself. Mrs. Ogburn, the floor is yours. Thank you, Andy. Uh, you've done a great job tonight. Uh, I, you have facilitated good discussion and we appreciate it. Um, but just on behalf of the board, we know that our great schools are one reason why families choose to live and work in Henrico County. and the relationship that you have with your child's teacher and the schools and the entire HCPS staff forms a great team. And that team is focused 
on making sure that each and every student has the opportunity to succeed to his or her potential. That is our primary focus. That's what we all want. So on behalf of the um, HCPS team, your team, we work for you, and the school board members, we want to thank you for taking this time out of your busy day on this beautiful day, as we have all noted, to be with us, to give us your feedback and your ideas, and you are a crucial part of the team. We all know that and appreciate you being with us tonight. Mickey, thank you very much. And I do want to put up on the screen our third in a series of listening sessions. We'll be right back here in this format on Tuesday, May 25th, same time, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Our topic will be academic growth, another key component of the school division's strategic plan, which you can find on the homepage of our website, henricoschools.us. Look for Destination 2025, the plan for HCPS. Our listening session on academic growth will be Tuesday, May 25th at 6.30 we hope to see you then. We'll talk about academic growth. We'll do shout outs for the school division. We will be right back here to listen to what is on your mind. That will do it for us on a Tuesday evening for all of us here at Henrico County Public Schools. I'm Andy Jenks. Thank you so much for being with us. Take care, have a great evening, and we'll see you again next time. Bye now.